So in this section of the tutorial, we're going to look at the landscape and environment a bit more. So first of all, we're going to drag in a landscape, twin motion ships with a couple of landscapes, a flat one and uh, something called rocky grasslands. You drag it in and twin motion prepares the terrain for you and you can see it kind of automatically comes in. Um, now we can automatically see the beige aspect there is the existing ground. Okay, but we'll leave that there for now and we're going to go on to the sculpting tools to begin with. Basically, we can select a sculpting brush, we can change the diameter of the brush and also the intensity as well as um, the shape of the brush, the different type of brush types themselves. Um, so let's kind of slide up the diameter here and the intensity a little bit. You can see when we work into the model, we start to kind of click and hold the mouse and the first button is raise. We're going to click and raise and we can kind of start to raise and sculpt this landscape up and down. Now the higher it goes, the more rocky it gets. So that's a kind of automatic thing that the twin motion does. We can fiddle around a bit with the intensity as we go. Just make it a little bit less intense, just to kind of make it a little bit smoother, maybe around the base of these hills. So this is a great way to add some kind of context to your projects and to your models. Um, it's very intuitive. You can see we can kind of like quickly uh, kind of spray around. It's almost like um, it's almost like 3D Photoshop, I guess, in a funny kind of way. Uh, it really is nice to work with the terrain. Now we can also go to the dig mode. On the dig mode, clearly we can do the opposite of raising. We can actually dig and sort of dig down the ground. As you can see, it's extremely satisfying. Um, we can work quite rapidly. Um, it's kind of like really a case of just sort of keep going, keep working, keep adjusting the intensity and diameter until you're ready. Now we also have a smoothing button. And um, that's pretty obvious what that would do. It kind of smooths out the harshness, um, just kind of allows you to kind of get a little bit more softness into the landscape. And it's best used quite slowly, I would say, sort of when you're moving around the model. You can again increase the intensity and just sort of smooth off those mountains there in the distance. Um, we have a few other options as well. Um, let's kind of have a look at the smooth a little bit more here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So next we've got the noise. Now noise, again, will just sort of add in a little bit more jaggedness, make it a little bit more sp uh, spiky, almost the opposite to smooth, really. Just makes it a little bit more kind of gnarly, uh, a little bit more mountainous, if you like. And that's kind of quite a nice option for more sort of dramatic mountainous landscapes. That's pretty cool. Next, we've got the erode. Now, again, this is um, going to basically take the model and you'll see how, let's just adjust this diameter first before we kind of go in there. Yeah, just kind of erodes the peaks, sort of makes them look a little bit more weathered, a bit more rounded, a bit less spiky and not quite as gnarly as they were before. So again, very easy to sort of really work into the landscape and really sculpt these sort of hills and mountains and stuff like that. And finally, you've got the flatten. Um, so the flatten, pretty obvious what that would do, it actually flattens off the top. It doesn't completely um, sort of lower, it's not like the erode or anything else, it just sort of flattens off the section you're working in. So great for doing things like plateaus and sort of um, flattened areas where you kind of, you know, almost like a cliff top, I would say. So next up, we're just going to start a new quick little tutorial, drag in one more landscape here. I'm just going to run through how you can create realistic looking areas of water, things like lakes and ponds, um, if those are something that you're looking for in your models. So we've got the kind of starting ground and you can see we can essentially click on this and move this up and down. So let's kind of move that down a bit. Um, in fact, I think we're moving the landscape up rather than the ground down, but either works. So we're going to click on the dig mode. And when we click dig, we'll be essentially sculpting the landscape down. But what that will do is then reveal um, the starting ground, as it's termed, in Twin Motion underneath. So you can see as soon as we start to dig, we kind of go down far enough. You see that beige area down below. Um, so it's kind of nice. We're sort of making almost like a like a little lake or maybe a river or something. Kind of just keep sculpting down. And that, that beige surface is the starting ground that comes with Twin Motion. Now you can actually turn that off. Um, in a bit, it will obviously change the texture. It's just really nice to sort of show you how intuitive and straightforward it is to sculpt this landscape. And you can see we get these nice little sort of rocky cliffs around the edge as well. It's really super fun. Um, I really recommend you try it out. Um, so that's the purpose of this little tutorial, just to get you to try these things out. 
And then when you come to need them in your actual projects, you'll know, you know, if you if you need these elements, um, you'll know what to do. Okay, so we're going to go to materials. We're going to click onto materials folder. We're going to go down to water, and you see twin motion chips with really a bunch of different waters. So there's about eight different waters. Um, we can kind of click on those. We can raise that landscape up and down as well, just to kind of introduce a little bit of height difference. Um, let's kind of drag on something a little bit more reflective, a little bit more ripply, so waving in the wind as well. And again, you can change the opacity and the color. So let's kind of fiddle around with the color. Let's have a look at the opacity. Obviously, make it pretty transparent, hardly visible at all, or you know, quite, uh, quite sort of non-opaque so you can barely see through the reflectivity as well that's how much sort of reflection you're getting off things like the sky and the clouds of the environment if you have them and you can see we've also got weather and weather is whether it reacts to things like the wind and the rain and the snow that kind of thing as well so if we do click onto weather if we kind of slide down um, the season far enough uh, to winter mode it actually freezes the water and becomes ice that's kind of cool. And if you change the weather slider enough, it will kind of start to rain. Yeah, there we go. You can sort of see it starting to rain. And uh, goes the sky goes a bit a little dimmer and the ground goes a little bit sort of wetter, a bit more shiny. So that's pretty much what you do to create some water. Um, you know, you can really create some nice aspects with that. You can keep going on the settings. Um, we can kind of introduce a little bit more bump as well. So you can see the water's really flat without any bump. Um, so we can kind of change the scale of the bump as well, the ripples if you like, depending on the kind of water you're trying to emulate or create here. And we click more, you can actually rotate it round as well. Obviously adjust the axis, that won't really make a huge amount of difference. But you, there is also a setting for speed um, and we can do, let's see you can actually stretch on the y-axis and the x-axis as well. That's all pretty cool. And you see, if we go back to scale, we can click speed. So with speed, this is great for making things like flowing water. Um, so particularly things like rivers, where you want the water to actually appear to move in a certain direction. Or here in the way, maybe the water's like blowing across the lake um, in terms of sort of moving. So you can adjust the speed in the X and Y direction and that means you can get a 365 degree sort of angle but you can move in two directions at the same time. So that's quite fun to try. Definitely recommend you give these things a go. Okay, so next up we're going to take a look in more detail at the vegetation. So we're going to start off with some trees. Now you can see with Twin Motion it does ship with a really good library of trees. Uh, very easy, you can drag them in, drag and drop them in. They're really nice. Um, one thing I really love in the new version of Twinmotion 2020 is the fact you can just adjust the age of these trees. And the age isn't just a scale factor. You'll notice it's actually a physically a different type of tree. Um, you can turn the growth on and off, which is interesting. And you can also click season. So while it can automatically adjust the season, you can actually change through manually the different seasons um, to set the tree to winter, autumn, spring or summer. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the wind um, is obviously whether it sort of waves and the leaves blow in the wind. So that's kind of nice for animations to have that extra level of detail. So that's pretty cool. We can also, let's go back to our landscape. We can drag in maybe just one or two more types of trees. And you can see there's a really good variety of trees here. I definitely recommend, again, you try these out. It's the same with bushes and plants. And again, there's a really good library. I mean, we could always do with a few more, particularly if you're maybe a landscape designer. Um, but you can kind of kind of emulate pretty closely to most things. Most types of trees and plants are available. And there's nothing to stop you from importing a few more. Again, we've got the same sort of controls on the bushes. Uh, we've got the automatic, which responds to the weather and the time of the year, and so on. We can also drag in um, individual kind of clumps of grass. Now, they're pretty small, um, really kind of very fine detail. You can adjust the size. And again, you can have them sort of growth uniform or wild. A um, little bit hard to see, so I recommend you try this out. Uh, sort of, let's zoom in a bit there. Yeah, it's kind of like zoom in. Here we go. Just be able to sort of see that in a bit more detail, perhaps. That's pretty cool. But one of the things you definitely will want to try is um, the vegetation scatter and the vegetation brush tool, which we'll be dealing with in a later video. 
Okay, cool. So we can also do things like dryness and um, something called stripes. And we can also kind of tint the grass as well, just like everything else in Twin Motion. You can kind of change the colors a little bit. You won't really see the effect of the stripes unless you've got very large areas. And then some real fine control over things like angle and size of those individual blades. So definitely something to try in a bit more detail. Finally, um, we can have a quick look at something like the rocks. So adding a bit more detail, things like the rocks into in motion, these are really nice, uh, really high quality actually, really, really sort of good. And you can kind of drag and merge them together um, to create sort of bigger areas of sort of rocky patches, that kind of thing. They blend together pretty well actually, as you can see. So although it's sort of three individual rocks, you can kind of put them together to make what looks like one rock. Now, the other nice thing with these, obviously all of them are scalable. Um, you can move them around, you can copy them. So holding shift down just enables you to remember to copy off those rocks. And we can rotate them around to different positions. That's cool. And we can easily kind of like move them and scale them just to kind of position them where we would like. So definitely something worth trying. Let's have a look at scaling. So we can scale that pretty large just by dragging on the middle button. That scales in all directions. Um, if we just want to scale in the vertical, we just click on uh, one of the axes 